So I'm at this Thanksgiving party. We already ate dinner. And they cut that cake open and they ate it all up. And they said, yeah, this is some Jewish apple cake. There's this one guy there that's like, it's not Jewish apple cake. We're going to call it Druish apple cake. If this recipe at all gets famous, he's going to get some of the cut of the money. What's up, everybody? We alive. Yet another day above soil. Today, we're making Jewish apple cake. I can remember the first time I had a Jewish apple cake. It was actually at somebody's Christmas party. When I took that knife and I sliced through the Jewish apple cake and I bit into it, mm, mm, mm. I feel like I took a trip to a place I ain't never been before. And it was a very good trip, I'm just saying. My birthday is relatively close to Christmas. It's not the same month, but it's like a couple months later. But anyway, that Jewish apple cake was so good. And it was so full of flavor. I, I was like, mom, we're going to need to take a moment and stop because I just had the best, the best Jewish apple cake that I have ever had. On my birthday, I want to know if y'all can make a Jewish apple cake. But for some odd reason, I didn't think to ask that same person for the recipe for the Jewish apple cake. So my mom was like, sure, you, we can do a Jewish apple cake. And I got apple crostata. The apple crostata was amazing. It was good. But it wasn't a Jewish apple cake. So I find myself looking around for different recipes and looking at different ways I could tweak a Jewish apple cake. And I finally found something. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, instead of paint brushes, paint, cardboard, bottle caps, and all that other stuff, we're actually going to be doing some cooking. So you better get your spatula, better get your cutting board. I'm going to show you how to make Jewish apple cake. Time to give y'all a rundown of the ingredients that I'm going to be using for this Jewish apple cake. You're going to need both the granulated and powdered sugar. I like to use Domino. You're going to need all-purpose flour. You're going to need some cinnamon, baking powder, vanilla, and lemon extract. You're going to need vegetable oil. You're going to need some sea salt. Contrary to popular belief, orange juice is actually in a Jewish apple cake. You're going to need orange juice. I just use any kind, like you could use low pulp, high pulp, no pulp. Uh, orange juice is needed for the Jewish apple cake. You're gonna need four eggs. Yeah, you're gonna see six eggs right here, but you're gonna need four. And what is a Jewish apple cake without apples? I'm going to use two different types of apples. You can use one type of apple, but if you want more depth to the flavor of your cake, you're probably going to need to use two. If you want to use three different types of apples, go ahead and do it. The type of apples I'm using is Granny Smith. And one of my favorite types of apples, oh, 
I'll get them later, is Honey Crisp. So, yeah. these are the ingredients that we're going to be using for our Jewish apple cake. First step, cookie sheet, bottom rack, center rack is empty. We're gonna preheat this oven 350 degrees. The eggs ain't lukewarm or room temperature. And in about a few minutes, they will be in hot water. While my oven is preheating, I'm gonna start peeling these apples. Yep, just peel them. You can leave the skin on if you want, but I find that if I peel them, it extracts a lot of the natural juices that are in the apple. It's the sugar and cinnamon gets in contact with them. Now that we got all of our apples peeled, let's cut them up. So you're gonna cut them in half. I'm gonna take this core out. No, no seeds, please. And then I'm gonna cut them in eighths like this. And now, I'm dice them. Now that we got our apples cut, we're gonna put in three quarters of three quarters of a cup of sugar, and then we're gonna get one teaspoon, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of some cinnamon. cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. It's not quite. It. There we go. That's a teaspoon, actually, a little bit more. Yeah. And then we're gonna mix it in with our beautiful God-given hands, like so. And then we're gonna let these apples sit and you're gonna see a whole bunch of juices just seep right out of the apples. The natural juices is gonna be brought out by the cinnamon and sugar. Mm, mm, mm. It smells so good, y'all. Smells like autumn. Okay. Next, we're gonna need four cups of all-purpose flour. With your flour, like my great-grandmother, Coleman. She likes to sift the flour. This is not her sifter. Her sifter is actually at my mom's. My mom uses her sifter. I'm using my own. Now you're going to sift that into the bowl. Four teaspoons. Four teaspoons. Baking powder. teaspoon of salt. Okay. Flour, baking powder, salt. I'm gonna whisk this in real good. For the actual cake, you're also gonna need two cups of sugar. Ah. Okay. It's all good, I have another bag. Now we're gonna put it in a standard mixer. You're gonna need this paddle.
throw in your eggs first. Four room temperature eggs. You're gonna need a cup of vegetable oil. Okay, y'all, I'm not gonna lie, this next ingredient's gonna flip you out. So why are you putting orange juice in an apple cake? Believe me when I say this, it's gonna add a zip to it. I was stunned at first, but orange juice in an apple cake? Yes, orange juice in your apple cake. Then why don't you put apple? I don't know. We pretty much got all the wet ingredients in there. So we're gonna mix in our eggs, vegetable oil, and orange juice. Put in your two cups of sugar. Because we're not using butter for this, you can go ahead and put all of your flour, baking powder, and salt in a bowl at the same time. And then Spoon of lemon extract. So again, lemon and vanilla extract. They go hand in hand, y'all. If you put vanilla extract in something, you're gonna need some kind of lemon. It just it's just science. Just leave it to science. It works. As per usual. You're gonna need your butt pan. You're also gonna need your pan. In addition to your pan, you're also gonna need to flour the bottom of your cake pan. And don't forget that center now. Don't forget that center. That one's gonna to need to be floured too. And we're going to do a little pat pat, just like so. We're done taking our wet and dry ingredients for a spin, y'all. Mm, okay. I'm the. Look at this. Once again, silky smooth. You see it drip, drip, drip. Who wants to lick the paddle? Okay, about half of your batter is gonna go. I'm gonna show y'all something magical with these apples because I let it sit with the cinnamon and sugar. Just look at this. You see all that juice? All that juice settled right at the bottom and all that juice is gonna go right into our cake. Half your apples is going to go into the first half of the batter. It's gonna go right in there. And then we're gonna pour the remaining of the batter on top of the apples, like so. And then after that, we're going to put our remaining apples on the top, like so. And look at this juice right here. Look at all that juice. It's going to go... Mm hmm. All that juice. Look at this. All up on top of it. <coughs> this cake in this oven. We're going to put this cake in the oven. 
we're going to let it be in there for about hour 30, hour 45 minutes. 350 degrees, y'all. So I did a little bit of a check on it before I took it out the oven. I put it in there for a few extra minutes. So it's ready, y'all. <laughs> Time to take this out the oven. Look at that. I give you Jewish apple cake. Now, this has been in the oven for about an hour and 45 minutes. It was just sitting there acting all cool. I'm going to take me a toothpick and see if it's done. Okay, I finally got a skewer. Let's see if it's done. Look clean to me. I try to do ASMR with this glaze, but this will do. So you got a cup of powdered sugar, and I'm doing it right this time. It's gonna be one and two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then I'm gonna need a quarter teaspoon of, oh, actually, I wonder what it would taste like with lemon extract and vanilla extract. That's gonna be different. I just grabbed it by mistake. You know, my man Bob Ross, he doesn't make mistakes. He makes happy little accidents. So I'm going to roll with it. There we go. I'm going to mix that up real good. Here we go. I already got the cake outside. It's going to rest for about 20 minutes. we go glaze check the consistency nice and silky smooth done all right time for this glaze And then like usual at the end, I'm going to show y'all what it looks like on the inside when I cut it open. So before we part ways and leave, I have a relatively important question to ask of you. If you went to sleep tonight and you didn't wake up the next day, would you truly be satisfied with the life that you've lived? If your answer is no, then it's most definitely time to do some soul searching Think about some of the changes that you need to make within your life. I say this because there's a lot of things within our society that discriminate. Death, however, doesn't discriminate. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for watching my content. If this is your first, second, third, fourth, whatever time, hit that subscribe button. Become a member of the LDX family. We are still on the road to 100 subscribers. And as always, I'm also going to put the links to my Etsy and Instagram. And in this situation, the ingredients for my recipe right within the description. I leave you all with much love, good spirits, and vibes. Until next time, I'll see y'all later. I'm out.